Welcome. Here's a gory puzzler. Ten gnomes have agreed to play the following game. I'm not quite sure why, but it's a game of life and death. They will line up as follows, back to back, and an evil villain, which I guess is me, is going to place a hat on each of the gnomes' heads. And the hats can either be black, like this one, or they could be red. Now, they don't know how many black hats there are, they don't know how many red hats they're going to be. Maybe it's all ten black hats, maybe it's all ten red hats, maybe it's seven reds, three blacks, who knows. But the evil villain is going to do this, and each gnome, since they're lined up in such a manner, can see the hats in front of them, but they cannot see the colours of the hats behind them, nor can they see the colour of their own hat. So here I am, the evil villain, having lined up my gnomes, and placing a number of hats, some red, some black, on these gnomes, and then the game is ready to begin. What I'm going to do, as the evil villain, is come to the tenth gnome. The gnome who can see all nine hats in front of him, but can't see his own hat. And ask him to tell me the colour of his hat. Of course he doesn't know. But he's either going to say red or black. If he says black, and he's correct in this case, he'll live. If he says red, he's incorrect, and he dies. That's the game. The either he lives or he dies, and the next gnome will then be asked, what's the colour of his hat? He either says black or red, and if he's correct, he lives. If he's incorrect, he dies. And down the road I go, asking each gnome in turn the colour of their hats. Those that live, guess, guess correctly live, those that don't die. So the gnomes know they're about to play this game. So they can actually come up with a plan beforehand to try to help some of the gnomes survive. Now, for example, maybe one plan will be that the gnomes 10, 8, 6, uh, 4, and 2 will agree to say the colour they see in front of them. For example, gnome number 10 might say red because he sees a red hat in front of him, just so that gnome number 9, no, nine knows his hat is red. But in this case, gnome number 10 dies. Oh well. Uh, gnome number uh, 8 will say black because he sees a black hat in front of them, and by luck he lives. Gnome number 8 will say black because he just heard black behind him, and so on. That way they can guarantee the survival of 5 out of the 10 gnomes. But actually they can come up with a better plan. They can actually guarantee the survival of more than five gnomes. gnomes. And that's the puzzle. What is the maximal number of gnomes that can be survived and by what scheme? Now just to be clear with the rules, they cannot do any secret signals. They can't cough or shuffle their feet to give extra information. They can only say the words black or red. Each gnome can hear the answers behind them and they can hear the subsequent screams of horror or the sighs of relief, but they only hear the word black or red. And when it's their turn, they can only say black or red. So the puzzle is, I'd like more than five gnomes to survive, please. How could they scheme to do that? Here's a hint to the puzzle. So the hint may not be much of a help. It is possible for this noble gnome, who really doesn't have much chance of survival, he's got no information to go with, he's the one that's going to have to sacrifice his life possibly with 50-50% chance, but he can be so noble that with a single use of the word red or black, he can give enough information for the remaining nine gnomes to survive. That is, we can guarantee the survival of nine out of 10 gnomes. So how's that for a hint? Okay, here's how this noble 10th gnome can save the lives of the remaining nine gnomes in front of him with the use of a single word. So the gnomes will agree before they play this game that this 10th gnome will just say the word black if he sees before him an odd number of black hats in front of him. So an odd number of blacks. And I'll say the word red if he sees an even number of black hats. So in this case, gnome number 10 sees one, two, three, four, five, six black hats before him. So he'll say red. And now all the nine gnomes in front know there's an even number of black hats among them. All right, in this case, he says red, and sadly, he dies, and he's a very noble gnome. However, Look at gnome number nine. He's just heard that there's an even number of black hats among them. He sees one, two, three, four, five, six. That's already an even. So he knows that his hat just must be red then. And he'll say red and survive. Now gnome number eight has just heard what's going on. He's heard that there's going to be an even number of black hats among them. He sees before him one, two, three, four, five, an odd number of black hats. He just heard the one behind him wasn't black, it was red. He knows he must have the extra hat to make it an even count of blacks. So he will say black and survive. Look at this number known here, number 10987. He sees before him four black hats. He heard there's one black hat behind him and he knows there's an even number of black hats in total. 
So he's aware of five black hats right now. There must be another one to make the count even. It must be on him to deduce, he deduces, so we'll say black. And so on down the line. This fellow sees three in front, heard about two black hats behind him, knows there's an extra black hat somewhere around to make that an even count. He'll also say black. And down the line, the gnomes can survive. In fact, this is wonderful. Just using the notion of even and oddness, it's astounding to me that this one gnome back here with a single use of black or red can guarantee the survival of nine gnomes. In fact, the same trick works. If I had 100 gnomes lined up this way, this noble fellow can actually guarantee the survival of 99 of his friends. Wonderful. Actually, this is a great puzzle to play with students. Uh, rather than do hats, just use a playing card and have students line up like follows and just hold a playing cup up above their heads as follows. So you can see the colors behind you. So it'd be just like seeing all the hats in front of you and off you go, play the game. You, the teacher or whoever can be the evil villain and announce down the road. It's actually very hard for, to keep track of parity as you go along the line, trying to keep track of how many reds behind you and how many blacks in front of you and all the rest. But it's actually fun to play in practice. All right, a neat puzzle, a neat gory puzzle, all the sections of parity even an oddness. Love it. Thank you.